Hey guys, welcome back. Look at it, it's finally cloudy. This is the first time it's cloudy. You see the sun's gonna set out there. So I decided to come out for a nice little afternoon session. It's about 5 p.m. So I have about an hour, an hour and a half to fish. You know, yesterday I came out at this time without my rod and I saw some fish boiling right here. By the time I got my rod, they were gone. So today, I'm not making that mistake. I'm down here. I'm gonna have some casts and you can see I have the Cabo Killer on there. I used this thing in the morning and had some really, 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 really good results. I got two rooster fish and you know, I've been using this and the Ballyhoo because I've mainly been fishing top water and those are the two lures that have been, that have been working really, really well for me. But the rooster fish have been hitting way more on the Cabo Killer than the Ballyhoo and since they were out here this morning, I'm gonna give it a try. So I'll be casting a walk down the beach I think I'm gonna try to get by those rocks again because right along this coastline is where I caught the rooster fish this morning. So if they're out here, we'll get them again. So let's get to it. All right, let's get some casts in. I'm excited, you know, this is like the first time I'm out here when I'm not roasting in the sun or it's not before sunrise. So nice little change of scenery. But yeah, cast it way out there and get that quick retrieve straight back. See if it gets hit. You know, in the morning, I did really, really well on this lure. So let's see if we can replicate that now. Water just touched my feet and actually, this is colder water. I can definitely tell that the water is colder than it was, you know, yesterday. And that's pretty good because this, this month, you know, September and October are actually the worst months uh, for surf fishing down here. So I've been in the slow season. And the reason why is because right now, all those fish are lethargic, you know, the water was warmed way up. And now, yeah, that's, that's pretty cold actually. Um, and now the fish, you know, aren't, aren't really eating and the, the big predators have mainly moved out to colder waters. But you know, if the colder waters come in, so might the predators, including the mahi. So, you know, it's a good sign because even if I don't catch one today, it'll be colder water tomorrow. And you know, that will give me a great, great chance to hook something interesting on that morning bite before the sun rises. You know, a big storm might also mean that uh, there'll be stuff like tree trunks and uh, other debris floating around in the water and the mahi use that to hunt because the little, the little uh, bait fish will congregate around that little bit of structure and you know the mahis will just hammer them so i mean if there's debris out if a storm causes debris to go out into the ocean and it's near the shore that is great for me and i'm actually going to move down the beach that way because you see the waves are pushing this way and bait fish normally do not resist the waves or the current they'll just go with it so a good tip is just to fish like in the direction that the waves are going because you can see there's kind of a rocky outcrop out there so if the bait fish are getting pushed that way by the current predatory fish might use that outcrop uh, to kind of close them in they'll push them up against it and that's when they'll come in and just nail them Look at that, that's beautiful. You know, these guys are out here looking for fish too. Look at, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? <laughs> that's funny. Oh, cast away from them. I don't think I can pull in a sea lion. I think those guys might be a little too strong. I'm not gonna lie. But uh, 
Yeah, hopefully they're not scaring away the fish, which actually they probably are. Because they'll go after all these jacks, these rooster fish. I mean, they'll go after everything, really. Those things are pretty, pretty big. And not much out here can uh, avoid them. That's a needlefish. That's a big needlefish right here. Look at that thing, it's jumping. Keep my rod tip down just so that it doesn't get off because sometimes they they'll get off right on the jump. There we go. Nice, nice needlefish. Look at this. Look at this dude. What a beautiful fish. Oh these guys, these guys are pretty feisty. This is the third one I've caught out here, you know. They're not super super rare, but uh they're super acrobatic fighters, even though they're not mega strong, uh, just because of their shape. And you can see they're jumping out of the water, so they can be tough to keep on the line at times. But super cool fish, so let's get them dehooked. All right, here's a needlefish. You have to be careful when uh, handling these guys because they will turn around and try to bite you. you know, they got a pretty pretty long reach, so let's let's just dehook this guy quickly so we can get him back in the water. There we go, on that pop water cabo killer. So I'm gonna rinse this guy off really fast just so we can have a better look at him. And then I'll, I'll give you a little explanation as to why these guys are here and what they do. Quick rinse, quick rinse, quick rinse, quick rinse. All right, so this, this is a needlefish and these guys are super cool. You know, they kind of look like little marlins or little sailfish, but they're pretty vicious little predators. You know, these guys, I've been attacked uh, my lure has been attacked uh, this size by, by way, way, way smaller ones. So this is definitely a fish whose eyes are bigger than his stomach. But you can see it's a really cool, really, really toothy fish. Look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blue mouth. And you know, these guys will come and they'll, you'll see them jump after your lure. And uh, it's cool to ha hit them on top water because they're pretty, pretty acrobatic fighters and just such, such beautiful fish. You know, they don't have, they don't put up the biggest fight just because of the way they're shaped. But I mean, they're, they're predators out here. These guys are chasing bait fish and they're probably, they're probably the number one cause of bait fish deaths out here. So super cool fish, not really an eating fish because, uh, because of his shape, you know, not much, not much meat on that. So I'm gonna get it released. Super, super pretty fish though. So let's go. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful first catch right now. And look at this. This thing literally looks like a cartoon character, you know? It's got, got those big, big teeth, those big eyes. And just look at what a pretty, pretty fish this is. The colors are unreal. You can see the bottom is white and the top is blue. That's because if you look at it from, from, uh, from above, like a fish would, you know, you'd see blue and it camouflaged with the ocean. And if you look at it from below, you see white and it camouflage with the sun. So it's actually very, very purposeful camouflage. So super, super, super beautiful species. Let's get it released really fast. All right, that's fish. Fish numero uno out here, baby. You know, it's still light out. So I'm gonna keep fishing probably until it's pretty dark. What a good start though. So I'm gonna keep the Cabo killer on here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the line is frayed because you saw those guys are sometimes they can fray your leader. I'm using 50 pound fluoro. I don't see any nicks in the line, so I'm going to keep this on there. But if I did see a nick in the line, I would swap this out because that'll if this breaks on a fish, you know, you're going to super regret not swapping it out. But since this is fine, we'll get straight back to fishing, see what else we can hook up. I love those guys. Honestly, they're kind of like cartoon fish snakes. So see what else we can pick up. Maybe another needlefish, maybe a rooster, maybe a jack. You know, you never know what's out here. That's one of the reasons why I love surf fishing so much. You know, you hook something and you're wondering what it might be. Oh, did you see that? Another needle, another, another needle fish literally just jumped, hit my lure and missed. That's one thing about these guys. They kind of suck at aiming. They'll barrel at your lure at hundred miles an hour. 
and just fly straight past it. And it just because their mouth, you know, compared to the lure is pretty small. So this morning, I actually got hit by the same one about seven times and none of those times did it get hooked. So it's kind of funny. And when you do hook one, it's pretty cool. So it just makes you appreciate them a little more. Oh, there it was again. There it was again. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get this guy. You know, if they suck at aiming, there's not much I can do to help them. If I reel slower, they won't necessarily hit. You know, they like it pretty, pretty fast. So just give it as many chances as it wants. I'm casting across the rocks here just because rocks do tend to hold fish. So I can see kind of a dark spot down here and I know it's a rocky bottom. So my lure is just gonna be swimming over the rocks and I'm actually gonna slow it down while it's over the rocks because uh, the snapper, snapper aren't as fast. You know, they're quick, but they're not fast. They won't sprint after a lure like a, like a rooster, jack, mahi, needlefish will. So, you know, when, when you're over rocks, uh, be a little patient, just slow down your retrieve and uh, you could catch a snapper. Uh, even though it's not the season, you know, snapper season is more around April, May down here, but you still catch them. You know, you never know. I'm gonna go on those rocks over there. You know, it's kind of like a little, a little sand before the rocks. So this will get me casting way past that buoy. Buoys hold fish. So, you know, it could be a great shot at something right now. Nice. You know, usually the waves are way too high to stand here, but it looks like for now, it's totally fine. So let's see, yep, that'll get me way past that orange buoy. It's getting dark and I don't know if you can see, but the sky literally looks purple. So, so, so nice. Oh, and I think someone else just hooked a needlefish right up there. Yeah, that's another needlefish. I'm gonna go back up there, see if I can hook one, because right where I was standing, someone just hooked a needlefish. That's nice. Yeah, I just caught one right here. Yeah, here, you wanna unhook him? Yeah. Okay, got him. Sweet. All right, needlefish. Nice. You gonna release him? There you go, release that fish. Appreciate you, boss. Nice. Hasta luego, amigo. <laughs> there he goes. Yeah, I just caught one literally right here. Yeah, I'm right there. Yeah. I'll keep fishing here then. All right, so that's two needlefish right here so maybe we can pick up another one you got him hey he's back on no way all right well he just hooked up briefly again so this fish here yeah i got off huh damn all right there's needlefish hitting it's needlefish hour Let's see if we can see if we can get some Oh yeah, fish on, fish on, needle. Oh, he got off. Ah, oh, right here. Yeah, needle, I saw him. Oh, it was on for like a second. It's needle fish at clock. Ah, <laughs> oh, those guys are fun. Let's see if we can pick another one up. That guy was on for like one second, but I saw him, saw him jump out of the water and just shake the hook. These guys tend to hit pretty close to shore. They don't actually have to cast that far, you know, they tend to hit kind of in the whitewash where my lure is right now would be the strike zone for these guys. So I'm not, I'm not going to cast. I'm not, a, I don't need like a hundred yard cast for this, you know, chop my cast in half, save some energy, 50 yard cast should do the trick. Cause it'll probably hit around 20 yards away from me. So that should do it. getting dark out here can't even see where my casts fall very well so I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes you know we thought we'd get a needlefish after that because a lot of times you know they're, they'll travel in schools or the same one will come and hit if it misses uh, but we both lost one so that's that's pretty tough all right it's too dark out to be fishing now and I'm gonna be back in like 
nine hours or something at five in the morning. So I'm gonna go back, sleep. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, until next time, tight lines.